Special thanks to Patreon supporter The Grand Pope for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tool here bringing you another Minecraft World War 2 vehicle tutorial. In this tool, we'll be going ahead and building the STKFC 234-4 Puma. The STKFC 234 was a family of armored cars designed and built in Germany during World War 2. The vehicles were lightly armored, armed with a 20, 50, or 75mm main gun, and powered by a Tartra V12 diesel engine. The SDKFC 234 broadly resembles the appearance of the KF or SDKFC 2388 RAM. The version we have in front of us here is the 234-4, which has a 7.5mm Pack 40 L-46 gun and an open-topped superstructure replacing the turret. 89 were built between December 1944 and March 1945. What this was was basically a kind of tank destroyer version of the SDKFZ. It equipped a larger, more powerful gun, and um, yeah, basically that was pretty much the main gist of it. Um, overall, really cool vehicle and should make an awesome addition if you're looking for some cool vehicles for kind of a late war um, Germany uh, type of scenario. Uh, but overall, really nice build and um, really happy the way it came out. Before we go and jump in to take a look at the build, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Do Grand Pope for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and post a small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn your core request you're choosing. It uh, overall really helps support the channel and the work I do, and um, you obviously get that cool perk of a vehicle request per month you're a patron. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here and take a look at the vehicle. So starting off with, we have the main kind of chassis here of the Puma. This is a newly designed chassis compared to our original Puma, so we'll hopefully see some uh, updates coming out soon for new versions of the um, traditional Puma that everybody knows at the turret. But we have the main gun mounted up on top here. This is the 75mm long gun, um, as first as the turret version, which has only a 50mm. We have a open top back here to allow space for the gun to actually fit. Um, a little bit of detail in here with the crew fighting compartment just unfortunately uh, we don't have a whole lot of um, room to really work with and put some stuff in here so we just kind of had to do it the best we could and this is what I was able to fit in here and it overall doesn't look too bad we have the cannon breach obviously um, all the detail around that we also have the MG 34 mounted here to the side for crew use uh, radio antenna obviously all the detail in here on the sides of the vehicle as you approach the back here we have the exhaust and spare tire and again all the various little details um, on the back here of the vehicle but overall it's a really nice uh, design and again it's going to work perfect for any kind of late war um, scenarios in which you have um, Germany involved anyways though without further ado let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer layer number one all right guys moving into our first layer here we have layer one for layer one to get started if you were to place down two polished black stone stairs they're going to be back to back like so we're going to then place down an end rod, come off this stair here, a stone brick top slab, a end rod, and then a polished black stone upside down stair here, and a second stair right behind it. We're going to go and then skip a space back from those upside down stairs, and we're going to go and do the same thing again. So two polished black stone stairs back to back, end rod, uh, stone top slab, end rod, and then again, your polished black stone upside down stairs. After we have that done, we're going to go and then skip a space of one, and we're going to place down our two polished black stone stairs, same thing over here. So just like this, we're going to go then place down an end rod here, stone brick top slab, and another end rod like that. And again, we're going to go and skip a space going back, and we're going to place down our, our two polished black stone stairs. Same thing in uh, here, end rod here, stone brick top slab, end rod, and then another polished black stone upside down stair here, and then one right behind it. And once you have that all complete, that's going to basically set up your wheelbase. I'm um, looking at from above here, this we should have for layer number one complete. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number two. I right, guess moving into our next layer here, we have layer number two. For layer two to start with, we're going to go and place down two polished black stone stairs back to back on top of each one of these polished black stone up down stairs like that for our wheels. So we're going to go and do this for all eight wheels. So you sh should have a total of eight of these um, sections set up like so. And just like that. So with that set up, we have our wheels done. We're going to go and then go to the space in between the wheels on the stone brick top side. We're going to place down anvils. And then we're going to then place down a dark oak fence gate. It goes from the anvils to the polished black stone stair to the side of it. So we're just going to do this to the sides here, like so. 
And after we have that done, we're going to then take our smooth um, sandstone. So we will be using smooth sandstone for this. And uh, we want to go and fill in the inside here between those axles. So let me go and grab the actual full blocks here to make our life a little bit easier if I can actually find them. And there we are. And we're going to go ahead and start off by just going ahead and placing down a row three across this space here. And also a row three across here. Again, row three across this space. Two rows of three right here to fill that in. Now, going to the front here, we're going to go ahead and grab our smooth sandstone. We're going to place down a uh, smooth sandstone block here in the center and then an upside down stair. To the sides of that stair, we're going to place down a corner stair and then another upside down stair going back from it. So it should look like that there from the front. With uh, that done, we then want to go ahead and grab a birchwood fence gate. We're going to place down a fence gate coming off these two stairs here and we're going to open these toward the front. And then coming off those fence gates, we're going to place down a birchwood sign like so. We're also going to go ahead and grab a skeleton skull. And then an end rod, we're going to place down a skeleton skull on those two corner stairs. And then an end rod across in between them like that to go ahead and complete your little front bumper there. With that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some birchwood uh, slabs. We're going to place down a birchwood top slab here in this space. A birchwood sign on the side of it. Same thing over here, birchwood top slab and a birchwood sign coming off the side of it. We're going to leave this space alone and we're going to then go back to this space between these two rear wheels. We're going to place down a birchwood top slab again to the sides and then a birchwood sign come off the side of that top slab. After that's done, uh, we're going to continue on by taking our smooth sandstone. We're going to place down a smooth sandstone block here in the center, followed by an upside down stair to both sides of it like so. We're going to go ahead and also place down an upside down stair come off these polished blackstone stairs, or sorry, actually just a normal stair rather. And we also want to take our polished blackstone stairs. We're going to place down two upside down stairs back to back in this space here. And then we're going to go then place down our birchwood trap door, come off this stair like that to the right side. After that is all complete there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for that. And one last thing we're going to cover here is going to be these banners here for the wheels. Now these banners here can be uh, pretty much whatever you really want them to be in terms of color. So you can see I went ahead and went with yellow. Yellow is kind of the closest state shade we have to a tan color. Um, and again, if you're doing this in a gray color, which you can, you can use gray instead for that color in the center or, you know, whatever you really want. Uh, but basically for these banners, they're really simple to make. I'm not going to show you guys in a loom because they're so easy, but basically it's just a black banner. You're going to go ahead and do a line of whatever color. So for me, I have yellow. We're going to do a line of yellow on the left side here for one banner and a line of yellow on the right side for the other one. So it should look like this. We want to go ahead and take our black. We're going to place a line across the top and a line across the bottom. And once you have that done that's pretty much your banners real simple to make pretty straightforward and we can just go ahead and place these on the side of the polished blackstone stairs now again these are kind of optional you don't need to place these banners but i like to place them because i feel it adds a little bit more detail to the wheels and makes them look a little bit more interesting to um, look at as opposed to just the normal stairs but again that's just kind of what i like and you can obviously alter it to fit whatever you like best or whatever you prefer anyways though that right there is going to conclude layer two here is a overview of what it looks like from a top down view and with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a row of three of smooth sandstone slabs across this space here. And then we're going to go ahead and place down an iron bar to the sides there on the up of those fence gates. Going back from this, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block here in the middle, then one to the left. And we then want to go ahead and grab a birch strip birchwood block, and we're going to place it down over here to the right side. Coming off the side of these blocks, to both sides, we're going to place down a sandstone slab. If you're on Java, we can also go ahead and place down an item frame on the side of that slab. And in the item frame, we can place down a snowball for our front headlights. Just a quick side note, if you are not on Java, you will not be able to place down an item frame and iron bar in the same block space. Unfortunately, there really isn't any alternative to this design here and how you can add these lights, but nice feature for Java. And if you're not on Java, you'll probably have to pass up on adding these little lights right here. Um, so just unfortunate, but that's just kind of how it goes. Um, for our next uh, thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and place down a piston on both sides if you're on Java. If you are not on Java, I would recommend using the end portal frames instead as an alternative to those pistons. And we're just going to place down a row of three of smooth sandstone across, across between those pistons. Um, also, instead of the pistons here, you can also place down a sandstone stair. So you can place down one like that or a stone stair, whatever you block, whatever block you're using. Um, again, so either the end portal frames, pistons for Java players only, and then the... Um, stair are a couple options there. Then on the side of those blocks, we're going to go ahead and just place down a birchwood sign to both ends. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and take our stripped birchwood. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four blocks back. One, two, three, and four blocks back like that. 
on the sides of those blocks. We're gonna place down a birch wood button on the two on the two ends, and then two trip row hooks down the center like so. And same thing over here. And we can also just fill in the space in the inside here uh, with smooth sandstone, except we're not gonna go all the way back. We're gonna go ahead and stop at this section here. So we'll fill in our first two rows like so. Then at this point, we do have our interior start to show up. So for our interior here, we're just gonna take your stone pressure plates, just place down a row of three, and they're gonna place down two here, followed by a polished blackstone stair, like so, over here on the right side. Once we have that done, we're gonna place down another um, smooth sandstone block to both sides here. We're gonna place down one and two stone pressure plates, and then we wanna go ahead and grab ourselves a andesite wall. We're gonna place down an andesite wall right there in that corner. And uh, that's pretty much all we have there for interior space, so we'll go ahead and continue on. We're going to place down another row of three of smooth sandstone across the center here like so, and then a sandstone stair like that to both sides from it. We're going to go ahead and place down a second stand sandstone stair going back from that stair like that on both sides, and then another row of three of smooth sandstone across the middle here. A third row of three going across like so, the sandstone slab to both ends, and we're going to go ahead and place down a sandstone stair coming off those said slabs. We then want to place down a sandstone wall to both sides, a smooth sandstone block there in the center, and then a, a second a uh, smooth sandstone block going back with again a sandstone wall on the sides there. Once we have that done, we're going to grab ourselves a dragon head. We're going to place down a dragon head on top of these sandstone stairs to both sides like that so the snout of it is facing toward the inside. And we also want to go ahead and place down two polished black stone stairs. One come off this wall here and one come off that full block like so. In the center or on the bottom here of the stairs, we're just going to place down a row of three levers and we're going to go ahead and flick them so that they face forward like so. And after that is all done, the last thing for us to do really here is to be taking um, some end rods here. And we're just going to place on an end rod that goes back from those uh, two uh, skulls there to go ahead and make our exhaust like that. And after we have that all done now, for us Java players, we're going to go ahead and type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And if I press an enter, we'll get this glowing stick. What we can do here is we can go up to the pistons, left click until we get selected extended false pop up on our screen, and then right click it to actually get rid of that wood portion. And it kind of helps with the sloping there for our front fenders and just overall kind of improves the look of it. So that's what we have going on there. And that is going to conclude everything there is there for layer three. Again, here is a overview of what it looks like from the top down view. With that though, that's gonna end that layer. Let's move on to layer number four. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number four. We're gonna start off layer four with going ahead and placing down a uh, spruce wood, or actually, sorry, a birch wood stair here, and then a sandstone stair to both sides. We're gonna go ahead and place down an iron frame coming off the side of that block, a black bed in the iron frame rotated sideways, and if you're on Java, we'll also place down a birch wood sign on the side there of the stair to go ahead and kind of make that iron frame sit a little bit more cleanly in that space so the birch wood kind of helps it blend in a little bit better. After that, we're gonna go ahead and place down two blocks that go up from the uh, iron bar here and then we're going to go and then delete the first block on the bottom of this block we're going to place down an end rod on both sides delete those top blocks and that right there will be it for the front there after that we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of three of smooth sandstone full blocks across this space here we're going to go and then follow this up with a skeleton skull to both sides after we have that done we're going to go and then place down two sandstone stairs back again same thing over here on the inside here we do have a bit of uh, interior uh, that starts to come into play here, so we will be going ahead and talking about that here. Um, so for our interior, uh, we want to start off by going ahead and placing down a sandstone wall here in the center. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, birchwood fence gate that's going to come off this wall like so. So it's going to come back like that. Or actually, rather, the fence gate's going... No, it's going to be like that. And then we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull coming off the side of it. We then want to go ahead and place down a dark oakwood trap door that's going to be above this pist or this uh, pressure plate so it's gonna be like this and it's gonna sit like so and then after we have that all done there we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods and we're gonna place down end rods here between the wall and the stairs there then we're just gonna place down a birchwood trap door that goes back like so from that uh, fence gate and after we have that done we're gonna place down a birchwood trap door on top of that um, pressure plate close it like so same thing over here on top of the stair close it like that and then over here on this space, it's gonna be one out to the side here on top of the sandstone block. And we're gonna go ahead and close it like so. We're gonna place down a skeleton skull on the side of this uh, trap door. And also on the inside here, we're gonna place down a jungle trap door here for the seat for the gunner here on top of this uh, inside wall right there. And then we wanna go ahead and just place down a 
nether birchwood trapdoor on top of this pressure plate and we're going to open like that to the side. Once we have that done, we're going to then place down our skeleton skull to the side here again. We're going to go then grab ourselves our anvil and our grindstone. We're going to place down an anvil here and then a grindstone going back from it. We then want to take our sandstone stairs. We're going to place down a row of three across of our stairs and then a row of three birchwood trap doors or sorry, birchwood slabs. A birchwood slab in the center followed by a daylight detector to both sides and then we're going to place down two daylight detectors going down the center here. We then want to place down a skeleton skull on top of this wall here on both sides and then a skeleton skull at a slight angle on top of these rear walls like so. Once we have that done, uh, for Java players, we're going to go ahead and do a cool technique here and this could be using our debug stick. We're going to go ahead and build off to the side here kind of up and at an angle from those dragon heads. And we're going to then place down a lever on the inside here so it's right above the dragon head. We'll take our debug stick here, we're going to left click the lever until we get selected face and it should say wall. We're going to go and then right click it to floor on both sides. We're going to go and then left click again until we get selected facing. And we're going to go ahead and rotate this until the lever looks like it connects up to that skeleton skull. And it kind of just helps uh, basically shape up the exhaust a little bit better. Once we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron bar on top of these two trapdoor or these two stairs here. And we're going to go and then just skip up from these iron bars like so. And we're going to place down an end rod on the bottom of those blocks like that. And after we have that done right there, that's going to complete everything in there for layer 4. And with that, we'll be going ahead and diving into our final layers of the build, which will consist of uh, basically all this uh, top detail here, putting the gun on and all that stuff. So with that, let's go ahead and move on to our last final layers. All right, guys, moving into our last final layers here, we have layers 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So to get started with here, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone block on top of this wall here. And then we're going to place down a sandstone stair to both sides of it like so. We're also going to place down a skeleton skull here on the sides of those stairs. Once we have uh, that all done there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of sandstone top slabs going forward. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like so. On the very tip here, we're going to place down a polished black stone top slab. We then want to go ahead and grab an item frame. We're going to place down an item frame here. In that item frame, we want to go ahead and place down a black concrete block. And then we're going to take some dark oak with signs on the side of the top slab. We're going to place down our signs and also on the front side here if you're on Java with the item frame like that. We also want to place down lastly a dark oak with trapdoor on top of that top slab for the front muzzle brake. With that done, on these first two sandstone top slabs here, we're going to go ahead and place down sandstone or sorry, birchwood signs, and then we also want to go ahead and grab our birchwood trapdoors and we're going to place down one and two on top. We can then go ahead and place down a uh, daylight detector right behind these uh, right behind these uh, trapdoors. And then after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, rather actually a polished blackstone upside down stair like so on top of that stair we're going to place down a redstone repeater facing that direction like so we're going to go ahead and place down a fence gate to the side here and then on top of that fence gate we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull for the kind of sights there for the gun then to the other side we're going to place down a birchwood fence post and then a fence gate coming off that fence post like so which we're going to open toward the front there after that, on top of that fence post, we're going to place down a polished uh, blackstone slab. Just like so. A chain going forward. And then behind this, we want to go and place down a wither skeleton skull. One here, and then one on top of that. And then we're going to go and delete the first skull like that to make our gun. We're also going to place down a wither skeleton skull on this side here of that slab. For the um, little kind of magazine there for the gun. After we have that all done there, we're going to go and then build our radio antenna to go ahead and finish off the build. This is going to be a birchwood fence post that's going to be on top of this stair here. And we're going to go ahead and just go up one, two, three, and four iron bars like that to go ahead and complete the antenna. And after we have that all done right there, that is going to pretty much wrap up layers six through nine for the build. One thing I do want to go ahead and cover though for Java players is we can actually change the properties here of the stair again, use our debug stick here. So we can, we can uh, left click it until we get selected shape. And we can actually go ahead and right click it until we get this corner stair. So we have kind of this corner stair without actually having to connect up to a stair or actually form one. And we can do this for both sides here. And what it does, it kind of helps create a more accurate turret shape for the front here. So again, that's just uh, something you could do for Java. Give it a little bit more uh, better uh, design and a little bit better of an um, accurate look. But anyways, though, that is going to do it for the most part there for the SDKFC 234 slash 4 
uh, armored car. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do use this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This will be a link from a style build to link to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter The Grand Pope for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2x4, and I will see you guys next time.